Uh, I understand. I'm from a r rural area, and I come from the agriculture sector, and so I understand more than most people how uh, vital the trucking industry is, especially for us to be fed. Uh, first and foremost, like we can talk about everything else in our house, but if we don't have food, we we are not in a good situation. And um, delivering goods, especially food, to grocery store shelves for Canadian consumers is is obviously a priority. And I've heard all of the witnesses today talking about shortages, uh, breaks in the supply chain, uh, whether it's at a rail yard, whether it's at the ports, um, all the way down the chain, it does have an effect. And we've seen that through COVID, seen major food spoilages and shipping containers not arriving on time because trucks were not available to, to bring the, the food uh, quickly enough to the distribution centers. And, and, and so I'm just curious, and perhaps maybe this is a question for Mr. Rogers, if you can comment on how this uh, labor shortage ha is leading to increased costs for Canadians for their food supply. And maybe, you know, I, I think you said that the fuel costs have gone up and that's one of the things we've seen is fuel costs. Like, and what will the increasing of the carbon tax have on, on, fuel, ta on fuel and the cost to ship goods already uh, going forward to our stores? Yeah, you're, you're bringing up some excellent points and I won't say costs are just going up in fuel and insurance. They're going up in everything. Um, if you're bringing product in from outside of North America, the, the ocean line shipping costs have increased tenfold from what they were. Um, and I'm going back six months ago to where those costs were. They have now started to come down uh, due to a, basically a supply and demand situation. So the costs now uh, we're hearing are, are back to 2018 levels. So, so that's normalizing to, to a certain standpoint. But the changing patterns that have occurred through COVID, uh, where the imports have, have definitely increased coming into North America, that's had a significant impact, effect on, on congestion. Our ports have not expanded. We have no more land to put the product. So congestion is a, is a part of the supply chain. What we are experiencing now due to the uh, backlog that was created out of Vancouver and the ships at Anchorage, in order to clear that backlog, they moved the product into central, central Canada, into Toronto and Montreal. The rail yards used to have, uh, one had three yards in Toronto, they now have nine, one had one, they now have two, and equally they've expanded into, into the Montreal area as well. Because of that, containers are being, are being split. We don't know where the containers are. They're just added congestion into these, uh, into these additional uh, yards. Because these yards have opened up as well, the rail have additional expenses. So the rail have changed their demerge and detention charges. They're now charging really after 24 hours. So they've reverted from 72 hours on demerge and detention to 72 hours. In addition to that, there is the cost of movement from the rail yard to these additional container yards that have since opened up. Um, and we figure that the average cost for an import container now has increased about $1,500 from what it was prior to this congestion being created. So you're, you're, you're talking about the cost of uh, increases on food. There are increases on everything that is being imported into this country at this point in time due to the congestion issues that have uh, have resulted through the supply chain. Thank you very much for that. Uh, and you kind of alluded to this earlier. Um, this crisis has been made worse by the labor shortage crisis by high inflation, high fuel cost labor shortages, and some groups that I've met with and um, and and groups that we've heard from have brought up that temporary foreign workers may be a solution to some of these problems, but I know from experience in the agriculture sector that TFWs are, are not a permanent solution and that there are many logistical and regulatory challenges with bringing them to Canada and obviously ensuring their safety as the Teamsters have alluded to. So I'm just curious if, if you believe TFWs are a viable option for the transportation sector and if we have time I'd like to hear from the Teamsters just a brief answer as well, please. I'll, I'll be very brief. I'm, I'm going to say yes. I, I think there is significant opportunity uh, to bring foreign workers in uh, on the driving sector. And what we're finding in Canada today is the younger generation are not aspiring to be truck drivers. Um, so we've got to find them somewhere. Um, and I, I think immigration is the way to go. And I'll, I'll, I'll defer to my, uh, my friends at the Teamsters to offer further comment. Um, uh, Teamsters' position is that um, we should 
more consider um, uh, immigrants who are on a path to, to citizenship. I think, as, as you mentioned, uh, temporary foreign workers uh, is a very temporary solution. Um, and uh, we would um, more like to see, um, you know, things like um, um, having uh, um, uh, considering the, the, uh, the trucking industry or trucking as a, a skilled trade in order for uh, better training and, and having the same standards across the country for, uh, uh, for any, any immigrant or temporary foreign worker that comes to, uh, to work those jobs. Thank you for that. I think part of what we're hearing, though, is that we need to have really good public policy that is compassionate and fair uh, towards new immigrants and, and attracting people into different skilled trades, because that's good public policy um, and supporting new Canadians as they try to integrate into Canadian society. So uh, thank you so much for those answers today. I know my time is up. Thank you, Chair.